Hello YouTube and uh, here we are for another update video. It's been a good few weeks since I last came to the boat and as you can see by my clothing the temperature has changed a little. Uh, we are now in autumn for definite. So uh, let's have a look around see what needs doing, see if there's any damage, water damage, that kind of thing and uh, see how we go. One uh, bit of evidence, it's, it's not rained for a few days but one bit of evidence there is is a bit of water there on the floor though that's come through the hatchway and the hatch isn't actually um physically attached at the moment because uh, this is where the chain's going to come through when we put the engine back in so uh, it's not actually sealed in so we're kind of going all right well that's a, that's an acceptable one thing i do what i'll do is look at the bilge see how much water's collected in here mm. oh dear quite a lot more there now well, there's good news here is that there's there's no evidence of further water damage anywhere along here. Remember, around the back of the sink was significant. Um, there's no stains, uh, mess, or damage here. We should probably look in this water in this bilge to see if there's anything in here that's uh, untoward. Oh, there's quite a bit, quite a bit collected in down there. But we can turn the bilge pump on and pump that out relatively quickly. It's about, a, I don't know, an inch maybe in there. One area that was that was significantly unprotected was here. There's no water damage there. And none of the cushions are damp, which is excellent news. And there's not much sign of any water damage here, though I'm not really surprised about that. So all in all, not too bad. <laughs> Obviously that water that's... Uh, on the tarpaulin would be inside the boat if we wouldn't hadn't got the, the tarpaulin or at least some of it would so with limited sunshine um and the need for heat um the solar panels will not be enough to keep the batteries going but i will run out the power to the shoreside power and we will uh, we'll run off the mains for a couple of days So what we have here is our shore power LED, which I fitted so that when we're inside the boat, we can see that we have power coming from the outside of the boat. So you see now that the Renergy uh, inverter charger is telling us that we have 237 volts coming in, but none going out because we haven't turned it on yet. And there you heard the relay click. And so we're now putting 236 volts around the boat. And you see the load is actually affecting the mains voltage there by dropping it through 5 volts. That's because of the cable distance, of course. It's only 16 amp cable and it's going absolutely bloody miles. Still within tolerance though, so nothing to worry about. So now we've got power on and we've had a look round. It's time to do some work. It's not TikTok, but you know, we try our best. Right, so with a bit of light on it, you can see the bilge is emptied now. While we've got this off, we'll see if that is the bolt that's causing the leak. Well, let's uh... see. Right, we're going to have a look up top. So that's definitely the, uh, the one. And I've got it out of the hole now. So we know that this is the bolt that's leaking. Um, but we also know that there's another... Uh, three or four and uh, one of them is visible here uh, that looks like there's no particular damage around there and then there's this one and this one does have some some goop around it some colouring around it because effectively what we know is that if that one was leaking 
then these will start. And once we've sealed the roof up, it's going to be a lot harder to get to them. So the best thing to do would be to take them all off. And that includes the ones down this side as well. So we've got to take all of them off, uh, take the bolts out and then just and see, and then put the handrail back on knowing that it's been sealed up properly. Measured the uh, distance between screw number one and screw number two on the handle and it's about here oh that felt like it actually oh that'd be good if i'd got it straight away same as taking the entire insulation down get number two off oh just a little bit of stiffness there oh no that's even easier that's come up beautifully simply. But hey, well there we go. So down this side, again, the one that's the most aft of the run, that one's dry, that one's dry. The other two, the one in the head and the one in the in the fore cabin, they're, they're actually so dry they're dusty. But this one is wet. Oh, well, see that one's interesting, that one's come up. That's the only one. Hasn't brought the. Uh, that hasn't it's got damaged. Oh, it's, it's somebody's tried to glue it. So there you go. Weather with eBay. A wet night for most, with lows down to four degrees. More rain and strong winds on the way tomorrow. Oh dear! So that's the uh, end of any plans of doing any work on the outside of the boat tomorrow. Better get the tarpaulins on. Well, that's a neater job uh, without the handrails because the uh, tarpaulin goes flat which makes it a lot easier to tie on. So, um, yeah, that should keep the rain off. Well, good morning. And uh, it has bucketed it down most of the night from about midnight through till it's now quarter to nine. And as you can see, uh, we are perfectly dry over here. Um, and we are perfectly dry over here. That one was the one I was worried about because I couldn't find it. This one, this is still leaking because that is the deck that I temporarily sealed and didn't do a very good job on. Uh, so we know what that one is and that's okay. Um, so let's have a quick look in the bilge, see how much has come in overnight. So that's pretty much a none at all. Good news on the leak front. Uh, we haven't cured them, but we've found them. And that's the main thing because once you've found them, so it's easier to cure. So the Chinese diesel heater, which we did a, a full video on, um, comes with this tank, this 10 litre tank. And um, as you see, this plastic tank has no, no outlet, but it comes with this little kit. And this kit specifically has this in it. This is the actual fuel outlet. That's the actual, no, that's the nipple outlet for the fuel pipe. Problem is, um, how does one get one's hand in there in order to feed this pipe through the hole what you have drilled? Given that that's what's got to go in, I've got to drill a hole in the bottom here, but I've got to thread this through the hole via well, I mean, you know, I just, I, if I'm honest, I don't really know how it's how I'm going to be able to do it. So, challenge is to work that out. We've got a cable rod here, and I'm going to put this little, uh, this flat section thing on it. And then hopefully this uh, piece of, it's not blue tack, I don't think, but it's some kind of putty type thing like a light blue tack stick that on there and hopefully if i drill the hole i should be able to feed it down now i've done a little bit of uh, a bit of pokery so that i can kind of see how easy this is going to be this is a test see if i can get it down uh in there and i can and it hasn't fallen off and I, I, i'm reasonably comfortable that i can probably do that then but there's no kind of guide. You know, I thought that I put some kind of, this is where it should go. This is the best place to try it. But there is really, there isn't. I'm just 
just going to do that as a pilot because I thought, do you know what? If this thing bites, I'll... Yeah, like that. <laughs> that. That didn't do. Okay, that looks good. Put my finger over it. Oh yeah, 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 that's better. I can see that now. But, oh, hang on, hang on. There she is. And we're in. I mean, that seems to be the job. So there it is, right down there, look. Well, I've got to get that blue tack out. Well, that's it. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're okay. There it is, finished article. Just want to see fuel pipe putting on that, and then we can start the diesel heater. Yeah, it's quite a lot of diesel in there. So I'm not going to lie, I do not feel that that has got a perfectly good seal. I don't trust it. Uh, I haven't got a choice, so it is what it is. I put some diesel in it and see if it leaks, and if it doesn't leak, I'll be a very pleased man. There's just diesel just there, so I've got to make sure that doesn't leak. But I'm going to also start the pump up and uh, see if that will pump okay. So put that on. And then uh, hold this in for three seconds. So that's increased in speed now. Still can't feel any warmth yet. So there we have the, uh, the diesel tank. I wouldn't call it installed, but... It's not leaking, and uh, it's got the pipe in the right place. Liquid petroleum gas. So as you can probably hear by the roar of the heater, it is bloody freezing this morning. Uh, I've got two layers on as I go out uh, to get the gas, and I bought a bottle of propane for 28 pounds. Six kilograms of propane, 28 pounds. That probably will last me a while. Propane does last quite well. Uh, I've also got myself the caramel mac with an extra shot of coffee and cream. Woohoo! Another important installation piece that I'd like to do, even if it has to be temporary for a while, uh, is get the gas connected to the cooker and then we can boil a couple of uh, boil a kettle in the morning and it saves me running up the road and paying five quid for a caramel macchiato nice though that is so the components that we have available uh, we have the tube cutter so that's going to cut the pipe and you have to use something like that because otherwise you'll flatten the pipe and it won't fit properly we've got the actual gas regulator uh, which fits onto the bottle and then we've got the um, the barb for the flexible pipe the flexible pipes over there and we've got another barb this end now what we should do is use this bubble tester um, and you fill it up with this propylene glycol but I'm probably not going to install that because we can make a temporary installation by yeah we can actually we can make a temporary installation Sit. So we've got an isolator valve at this end, but according to the boat safety scheme, if you have multiple appliances, every appliance must have its own isolator. But if you've only got one appliance, and we only have one appliance, just the one cooker, then you don't technically uh, need another isolator because the gas bottle uh, has its own isolator, so that, that would count as all that's required. Although it does recommend a bubble tester. And there's the isolator, this end, that we don't need, but we've got it anyway. So we use one of these because if we don't use one of these, and we just use a, you know, a, a saw or, a, a, you know, a set of snips, then we won't get an even cut. So you do need, when you're cutting pipe, to use a pipe cutter. Because if you don't, it, well, all it'll end up with is, is well, you'll end up with that. And we just keep turning it and then just keep twisting it up a little tighter and we keep twisting it 
and then each side, oh, there we go, and then it disappears. I think we'll all agree that's quite nice. And there is the end. So there's the, that's the backing nut. Olive goes on in there. That goes on to there. Lovely. Now what we need, spanners. 16 mil spanner this end for some reason well i'll tell you i'll tell you for why because it's bloody british pipe thread so it's not so it's probably an imperial measurement <laughs> so there we go and then all i've got to do now is just stick the the pipular onto there we will be cooking with gas ah So fitting the regulator, that rubber piece uh, uh, is interchangeable and this regulator came with three spares, so uh, I've got a couple of those spare. Um, and of course uh, the righty tighty lefty loosey rule does not apply when uh, fitting propane bottles because the thread is left handed, so you tighten it the opposite way. So it's lefty tighty righty loosey, I suppose. Would that be right? Yeah, I think it would. Now these are quite easy, these ones, because you don't need a spanner for them. And once you're in, open the gas valve. Just got to get the air out of the system first. Obviously there's air in there, but you can hear it blowing. There we go. Well, I deserve the last caramel macchiato uh, with extra cream and a shot because it's Sunday morning and it's very cold. Um, I deserve this because it's the last time, because next time we'll be bringing the kettle and we'll be boiling our own water and having our own coffee. I'm excited for next time. Well, all in all, uh, that feels like uh, quite a bit of work that's been completed, a few tasks. Um, that have been done so i feel like uh, it's okay i've got to go back to work again for another few weeks um i hope you enjoyed the video uh please like and subscribe and thanks for watching <laughs>